children have gathered here to here today, Lord, just to worship you. To worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for another good Friday. For you kept us. You are shaking the heavens and the earth to get us ready. And we thank you. God, we invite you to come in to this sanctuary right now. Rest and dwell among your people, God. We welcome you here. We love you, Lord. We are here to worship you. Thank you, Father. Rest and dwell within us. We invite you. We welcome you in to this hope. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
grateful that God brought you here to just see another day. Just to see another day. Yes, Lord. Why I'm truly, truly grateful. I'm grateful and blessed. And I've been praising and thanking God since Friday morning about 10 o'clock. I'm praising God with my family, my friends, my colleagues, my neighbors, my church family.
our beloved angel of this house, the leading servant, Pastor Platt, will welcome us and render his pastoral reflection. Come on, let's give God a hand clap for praise. Hallelujah. I thought y'all would praise him a little bit more than that. Because he did wake you up safely this morning. One day, and then my 
dream. I'm just looking at my family saying, take me, Lord. There's no need to be running and going nowhere because I know God. I, I, I trust the God. I've given my life to him. So I'm just going to sit there and say, God, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, your way, Lord. I just want to be ready. Yeah. Everybody here want to be yeah. ready? Yeah. You know, we have some who never come and never trust God, never go to church, never log on. And then when something happens, they're ready to do that. I'm saying, get a relationship with God. This is the, you're hearing it in so many different ways. People are talking about it in so many different ways. And we got to get to know him. We want to let our new um, members know that there is a new uh, uh, new members class that is conducted by me personally. You want to get to know the pastor. You need to come to these three new membership classes. I'm going to even create a little certificate for my uh, church clerk. We're going to get a big certificate to give. We already got a book, but we're going to give you a certificate when you finish the new membership class so that you can get to know the pastor and know the bylaws and the things and ask the questions that you don't always get to ask or you're afraid to ask sometimes in the orientation. But every Sunday... 9.30 to 9.50 um, in the pastor's office there will be a new, members, new membership class between 9.30 and 10 o'clock um, let me know if you're interested if you're coming just send me a text email or let one of the deacons know we'll set it up so you can be there look at God Deacon Platt is here He loves to pray, and he was kind of a little upset he couldn't remember when the last time. But the last time he was here was in February. Yeah. And God has yeah. brought him back to worship with us on today. Yeah. Yes. Next Saturday, his grandchildren are celebrating his 95th birthday. Yeah. And I'll just be there. <laughs> Yeah, notice I said the grandchildren, because I said, listen, the children did what they had to do. It's time for the grandchildren. So they put together a birthday party for him next week. So we want him to stay uh, comfortable, stay relaxed, and get ready to enjoy his big day. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you notice on the outside, there's a big green box in the middle of our parking lot. It's a book drop. And if you've been in our church meetings, we uh, discussed that we would allow the company to uh, donate to our church as people donate books. Books. So if you have books, don't let it be empty. Bring them to the book drop when you come to church. Put the crates in your car, bags in your car. You can just put the books in the box and they'll take care of everything. I know some of you, like me, have been trying to get rid of some of the old books. I've already donated. There's one at South Orange, about almost 100 books. And I got about 100, 200 more at home. Yeah. And so we have a place to, to drop the books. But guess what? It's also an evangelism piece. I'm hoping that when they drop the book, they'll look at the church schedule and they'll come, come and in. worship yeah. after dropping their book yeah. that we have made yeah. it available to the community. Amen? Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We have a special, special offer for you on today. It is only today only. So get your, you know, cash app or whatever you got to do. Get it ready. There's a Mother's Day luncheon on May 11th. Amen. And if you want to get your ticket today, it's only $25 today. And after that, it's $35. Ah, good boy. It's only $25. If you gotta write a check, get your checkbook ready. If you gotta do some of that fancy, move some money around, but only today, $25. The tickets are $35, and we're ready and we're excited to have one who has blessed us on many occasions, a great, great friend of ours. Our own Pastor Lula Baker will be the featured speaker on that day. And we have a chef who is well known, who will be uh, doing our cooking and our, our, our cuisine. And so we're ready, the men are ready, the mighty men are ready to celebrate oh, Mother's Day. And we want you all to come out and join us Saturday, yes. May 11th at 11.30. And if you want your $25 wow. ticket, <laughs> we have Johnson in the back. Today only now. Penny not gonna let him get $35 after the day. She said, you said today, get that $25 out today. Amen? 
Amen. I'm excited as you all can see. I'm excited just to be back here, just to get to work and do what we need to do. We have a lot of work that we're doing, yeah. you know, so we look forward to um, our uh, moving up another level. We're trying to refinance so that we can uh, get ourselves ready to purchase this building incomplete. And so I'm hitting the ground running as I, the plane hit the ground, you know me. I was already taking notes about what I need to do. So get ready, I'm gonna be emailing you, texting you, calling you, or what have you, so that we can have all of our documents and things in order. I'm talking, I'll be talking to our campus churches, our Haitian church, our Spanish church, our Pentecostal church, getting all of our agreements in hand and ready so that we can pre present a package that will be pleasing to us and that will allow us to continue to do the work of ministry while we're here. Amen? Amen. Amen. And by the way, that celebrity chef, I don't know um, if you all have heard of him or not. His name is Chef Kenneth Collins from the Food Network. He is the one who will be doing the preparing of our food on Mother's Day. Amen? All right, Come all on, right, put your hands right. together for our back to cross the worship leader by the way of the Church of God Christ Pentecost Church. Put your hands together for all <laughs> Our thought for the week Earthquakes in life may shake us up But they are an opportunity to build a faith That's unshakable Amen. After the prayer preparation song He's sweet I know Trusty Ethel Ellis will lead us in the morning prayer Amen Come on, God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 The word reads Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Share 
and let them know that the only way is through your son. Yes. And we ask, oh God, that you would continue to watch over our first family. Yes, Lord. Thank you, oh Lord, that they were able to go away, fly safely too, yes. have a safe stay, yes. fly back safe, yes. land safe, yes. ride home safe, yes. and back in the house safe. Yes. Thank you, Lord, because only you die. Only you die. We thank you, oh God, for returning our deacon plaque to us. Yes. Yes. Lord, we know you, Lord. Lord. He's here with us this morning, Lord, so we know yes. without a shadow of a doubt huh. you are here. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, and we lay that on your altar as well. Yes. So, Lord, as we embark upon this new week, we don't know what the future holds, but we know that it's all in your hands. Yes. So right now we lay that on your altar this week that we shall embark upon, Lord. And we pray, O oh God, that there be nothing that will come our way that between us and you that we can't get. So we leave it all on your altar right now. This is my prayer in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Do I have any witnesses here? God has been good to us. He has blessed us and he has kept us. He didn't bring us through earthquakes and hurricanes and all those things just to leave us. He brought us through so that we can love him and trust him. There is a word from the Lord on today from the book of Psalms, Psalm 146. Psalm 146, uh, one of my many favorite songs. This song uh, speaks to us clearly about where we should be in God. Psalm 146, we'll be reading verses 2 through 5. If you have it, please stand as we reverence reading the word of God for the people of God and for the people who don't know God. Come on. Psalm 146, and the word of the Lord reads, verse two. I will sing and praise the Lord God, for as long as I live, you can't depend on anyone, not even a great leader. Once they die and are buried, they will be the end of all that will be the end of all their plans. Mm, yes. The Lord God of Jacob blesses everyone who trusts him and depends on him. Amen. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Come to preach to you from the subject today. To know him <laughs> is to trust him. <laughs> to know him is to trust him. Let us pray. Turn about our Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace and another opportunity to be in this place to worship you, to glorify you, to magnify you. God, I thank you for this awesome responsibility given to me called preaching. The challenge of preaching, the challenge of walking in steps that you have put before me. God, I thank you and I praise you for it. But God, now I don't want the people to get it twisted. I ask that you would stand up and sit me down, hide me behind the cross. Allow the people to see and hear you and not me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. You may be seated in his presence. To know him is to trust him. I'm struggling with the title for this until I was talking with my wife and I'm talk, talking about who God is and I just said to know him is to trust him. Yeah. This past week was reflective and relaxing and I found myself praising God as I traveled uh, to my destination during my stay and my return home. Yeah. I have been traveling for over 50 years. I remember taking my first airplane flight at 12 years old, uh, going to a bowling tournament in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, and I'm still in awe of how God has blessed man with the intellect yeah. to move yeah. people by aircraft from yeah. one place to another yeah. all around the world. And the fatality is less than those of us who drive on a daily basis. Think about that. We get somewhat challenged and, you know, we get real holy when we're boarding that plane and it's taking off. But, but the fatality, the reason why there are thousands of planes in there, not just yours, the reason why they're able to do that is because it's safer flying than it is riding up and down one and nine in the park road. All I can do is praise God for his goodness and his mercy. And that's why trusting God is important for everyone every day of our lives. I trust in him because there was an earthquake. People forget, you know, the magnitude of earthquakes and hurricanes and what they do, as I said earlier, until it happens to them. We need to trust God before those things happen. We need to be proactive. Understand clearly that you have to know him first in order to trust him. You're not trusting the money you don't know it, but maybe you do it, I don't. You know, some of us trust the cab driver more than we trust God. Yeah. I get even better for you. At least they say taxi. Some of us trust the Uber and the Lyft driver more than we do God. And you might be afraid to admit it, but it's true. We get into cars with people we don't even know. And trust that they will take us where we're supposed to go. You see, when you trust God, you have to have the ability to put 
praise him effectively. So you can move into his presence to worship him in spirit and in truth. And you have to be able to do this and not be ashamed. Anybody here not ashamed to know God or believe in God? Bible says, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Andre Crouch wrote the whole song, we are not ashamed of this gospel. For his gospel is the power of salvation. I hope some of you on that. Don Staley uh, sparked the backlash last Sunday for saying, if you don't believe in God, something is wrong with you. I said, oh, Lord, Dawn, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> At least say, no, I just don't say something wrong. Just, just say, if you don't believe God, you don't know what you're missing. But she just went there. If you don't believe in God, something is wrong with you. And guess what? It didn't bother her. Because that was her speaking from her heart. And first they started telling her, well, you need to, you know, say, you know, apologize or say something because you know that wasn't politically correct. She said, I am not going to apologize for praising God. That was her praise. That's what she felt. And you know, I, I started to, uh, my sermon was already getting written because I started to think about a noted author, teacher, one that I uh, great, uh, was able to uh, sit at the feet at and through books and things of that nature by the name of Walter Brueggemann. He says in his book entitled Israel's Praise, he says praise is the duty and delight the ultimate vocation of the human community, indeed all creation. Yes, all life is aimed toward God and finally exists for the sake of God. Praise articulates, embodies our capacity to yield, to submit. That's what you were watching this morning before we started service. Praise allows us to yield and to commit and to submit and abandon ourselves in trust and gratitude to the one who we are. Praise is not only a human requirement and a human need, it is also a human delight. We have a resilient hunger to move beyond self, to return our energy and worth to the one from whom has been it has been granted. In our return to that one, Brueggemann says, we find our deepest joy. That is what it means to glorify God and enjoy God, not just on Sunday because it was an earthquake, not just on Sunday because you got off a plane, but to enjoy God every single day. Anybody here want to enjoy God every single day of your life? In the text, this psalmist encourages us to put confidence in God. We have to have hope in the providence of God. We are here only by the grace of God. We are here because God has allowed us to be here one more time to just get it right. That's yeah. why you're here. He's giving you another opportunity to tell somebody about his goodness. This text is reminding us right here on Communion Sunday that we cannot forget that God, the God that we serve, the God of heaven, became a man that he might become our salvation. Though he died on the cross for our sins, and we talked about that last week, and was laid in the grave, yet his thoughts of love to us did not perish, because he rose to fulfill them on earth. His miracles are examples of what he is still doing every day in our lives. We have to stop being reactive people and become proactive people. Stop being reactive to the stuff that happens and already oh, have what? a relationship with him. Mm. Well, see, when you already got a relationship with somebody, you feel comforted regardless to what's going to happen. You're protected. You feel as though everything is going to be all right. Psalm 146 lets us know as a hallelujah song that God grants deliverance to those of us who are captive bound in chains of sin and, and who are captive by Satan. He opens the eyes of the understanding. He feeds with the bread of life those who hunger for salvation. And he is the constant friend of the poor in spirit, the helpless with 
with him. Poor sinners that are fatherless find mercy and his kingdom shall continue forever. All of us are sinners saved by grace. Uh, all of us are sinners come saved. On, and God come on, come on. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we should know that because we're sinners saved by grace, we are believers and we should rejoice in Him. Uh. We should yes. know and tell people the Lord uh. reigns forever. This is not a temporary thing. Come on. The psalm is, is part of the last five songs of the Psalter, and they're known as the Halal Psalms. Theologians identify these songs as Halal Psalms. Psalm 146 is the first of the five songs. It sets forth a what they call a dichotomy between the powers and principalities of this world over against the sovereignty of God. It assumes you can't have it both ways. And and so it admonishes us not to put our hope in things of this world. I can't put my hope in the government of this world. I can't put my hope in the people of this world. I can't put my hope in technology. I have to put my hope in God. It is a matter of choice for all of us. Either we trust God or we don't. Come on. And no in between. No more. When you put your trust in God, three things should happen. You should one, build your faith. When you put your trust in God, you should study God's word. Not everybody who is here, every musician, every singer, every congregant, every bench warmer, you should be trusting God by building your faith, ah. studying God's word. And then when you finish building your faith and studying God's word, that's when you can walk in deliverance. That's and into his course ah, with praise. Come on. You can't do that if you don't have a relationship with him. Trusting God builds your faith. We have to learn to look back and thank God. Look forward and trust God. I say that again. We got to learn to look back and thank God and look forward and trust, trust God. God. Come on. Yeah, yeah. This past month during Lenten season, I sought my own deliverance by asking God to help me purge. I was reminded of a passage in Yvonne Pierre's memoir. I keep sharing this memoir with you all because it messed me up. I shared it in past sermons where she wrote, The day my soul cried. Today it still seems like she was talking to me personally. She said this, Don't be discouraged if people don't see your vision or your harvest. All they see from their perspective is that you're watering a whole lot of dirt. Ah. They don't see what seeds you've been planting with blood, with sweat, with tears, with uh, and lack of sleep. Ah. Make sure you don't abandon or neglect it because they don't see it. Ah. You have to know and believe for yourself. They don't see the roots and what's budding under the dirt. But it's okay because it's not meant for them to see it. Put a pin in that right there. It's not meant for them to see it when you're going through it. It's not meant for people to see it when you're dealing with a sin that you can't let go. It's not meant for people to see why you're doing what you're doing. Because if he can, if God can bless, he can bless anything at any time and any kind of way. He'll speak through a donkey and get you saved. He's a, Why I should have said the other word, baby, the word was something come on, come on. Why you wait? I'm gonna help somebody. Why are you waiting to get over your situation? Master it. You continue to do your work and have unwavering faith. Remember why you started planning in the first place. Your harvest will come. Well, for those of you who are still trying. To figure out why I do what I do, why I do it, you need to understand that there has been a whole lot of dirt. Look at somebody say, "I have to wipe off some dirt." Oh, you don't see it, but some of us got to store it in a place where it has not been revealed to you. Oh, you might get a glimpse of it one day. 
at 5, 6, 7, 8, 12, 13, 14 years old. I don't care if you're 50, 60, or 70. You still remember it. Yeah. 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 You got to remember why you started trusting God. That was your planting. You need to understand that there has been a lot of stuff in your life. But if God be for you, who can be against you? The mess that shows up at unexpected times through your family, through your friends, and through just life. As they say now, life, life. And through life, just life. You need to know that God. study. Uh, many of us have to learn how to trust God uh, in church. We have to learn how to trust God through the Bible study and through prayer. Uh, I still don't understand why people struggle to go to Bible study or go to prayer. Uh, but my testimony is that when I was going through the toughest part of my life, uh, Clark would tell you I started taking him uh, to Jesus bookstore. Uh, I was buying Bibles. Uh, I was trying to get closer to God uh, so that myself, uh, my Yourself. 
up to him. When you get to the Barak or the Baru press, it means to bow down and kneel down. In the extreme, it means to fall prostrate before the Lord. That's why we get on our knees and get on our face and praise God. That's a Barak praise, a Shabbat praise. Why did God make so much noise? Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Yeah. My daddy got his African shaker. Yeah. 
now. If you are watching us via Facebook or YouTube, I invite you to get to know Jesus as your personal Savior. A relationship with Him. To know Him is to trust Him. But you can't praise Him if you don't know Him. And you can't trust Him if you don't know Him. I invite you now. The doors of the church have been open for 2,000 years. If you're here and you want to have a church covering, everybody needs to have a church covering them. Everybody needs to have a place that they can call the church home. If you don't have one, we invite you to join us right now. Because we want you to know we don't doubt him. We trust him and we believe him. Is there one? You're welcome to come right now. You can. Join us in your giving. If you're giving today from your seat and you're using your phone, just make sure you get up, bring your phone and tap the plate and let uh, uh, give a signal that God is blessing you with giving, give it to you. If you don't have anything to give, then I encourage you to come up and tap the plate because we serve a God that right now, if you don't have it, uh, if you trust him, if you praise him, if you believe in him, he will fill your void and allow you to give. God loves a cheerful giver, and we should give and be happy in our giving. Come on, as the musicians get ready, stand to your feet as our greeters walk up. They would help you as you move to give.
Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for all that you've done. God, we thank you for how you blessed us and kept us just during this week. God, we thank you for allowing us to overcome the things that we just do not understand in this world. And allowing us to trust in you because our praise of you has been strong. Bless those who gave, Lord. Bless those who desired to give and didn't have to give. Let them know that giving is a part of worship. And if they gave with a cheerful heart, they can expect a blessing to come their way. It may not be financial. It may be health-wise. It may be beneficial to them and their love for someone. But God, just let them know you are there and you will never leave them or forsake them because your word is true. Cover them and keep them and allow these gifts to be a blessing to your kingdom and the building of it to make it stronger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Be seated in his presence. We prepare now to get ready as we hear the party going on downstairs. We're about to have the food at our party. Our communion, getting ready to commune with the Lord in a time and in a day such as this, remembering him for who he is. If you would, join me in the church covenant as we will read it together in chorus. If you have copies of it on your phone or in your pew on a, a laminated copy, you're welcome to join us as we repeat the church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards his expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort, and to stir each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some of the church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. We ask that you will prepare yourselves now for the Lord's Supper as we commune in memory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As our deacons come forward to prepare the table, reflect, meditate, examine yourself. And if there's anything that is keeping you from having a relationship with God or believing in God, 
We want you to ask the Lord right now to remove it. Don't say I'm not taking communion. I challenge you to say I'm going to take it because I'm trusting God. I know him. The word today helped me know him better. And I'm going to trust him that he's going to help me to see my way through. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. It will never, ever lose its power. We invite our Deacon Harris to pray over our offering table, our communion table. Let us pray. Eternal God, I thank you. I thank you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, dear God, that you woke us up early this morning to a brand new day. After all we have gone through during this past week, God, you still look down upon us with the eye and the hands and lift us up, God, to where you want us to be. And we're here to thank you. We praise you on this day, God, because of the day that we celebrate after the resurrection of Christ, God. We're still celebrating you because you live and you live within us. We thank you for bringing us to this point again in life, God, where we can celebrate your holy communion. And we thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross and gave your life that we will have a right to the tree of life. We just ask you now, God, as we come before you as empty vessels before full fountain, God, desiring to be filled, we just ask you to fill us right now. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your mercy. Fill us with your happiness, God. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your understanding. Gracious God, we just ask you to fill us with hope, with faith. And most of all, God, we just fill us with your love. Allow us, dear God, to love one another as you have loved us. Gracious God, we cannot thank you enough. And if I had a thousand tongues, I still cannot thank you enough because you've been so good to us. And we just thank you for this time that you've been with us right now. Dear God, as we come, pray and pleading and asking God right now the blood that represents your body. We ask you, God, that you would change these elements that we're about to partake in. Change the bread to a common use, from a common use to a spiritual design, God, that will make us stronger in, on the inside and stronger on the outside as well. Because we do pray in your precious name, we say amen, 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 amen. 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 We invite our ordained ministerial staff to come. We invite our deaconess and our other deacons to come as we prepare to serve. It will never lose its power. Receiving now, Donnie Harper, New Jersey Men's Choir, stop all the blood of Jesus.
say, Lord, make me better, make me stronger. I want to get to know you. For we know not the day nor the hour that he will return. But we do know that these are the last days and we see the things that are coming our way. And so we ask that he would purge us from the distractions, all the things that are going on in our lives. Those of you who are at home, we ask that you would use the elements available to you, whether it be water, crackers, or bread. Those of you who are not taking communion, we ask that you would just be in prayer, asking God to give you the strength or to give you a place in him where you feel comfortable taking communion. But most of all, we want you to allow this communion service to build you up so that you can learn to trust God in spirit and in truth. And with that, we ask that you would turn your communion to the side in which you have the wafer. We are going to eat first and then from eating, then we will drink together. He took the bread. And he broke it. He said, this represents, represents my body, which will be broken for you. Let us eat together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He took the wine. And he blessed the wine. He said, this wine represents my blood, which will be shed for the remission of your sin. Let us commune and drink together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After they commune together, and remember, he communed knowing that there were some challenges amongst them. He communed knowing that there was a Judas at the table. He communed knowing that there was a Peter at the table. Knowing that he would be denied and knowing that he would be betrayed. So when we commune today, we don't worry about who's here. We just worry about what the power of God still has the power to do. And so they went out to the Mount of Olives and they sang hymns. And they sang hymns, some of what we talked about today, the Hallel hymns, uh, to praise God. And so we have a hymn that allows us to praise God, but also to keep God close to us. If you don't know it, listen to the words. And if you do know it, repeat it with me. It's the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. I know him a little bit better. I'm going to trust him a little bit more. Neighbor, I know him a little bit better. And I'm going to trust him a little bit more.
back. Twenty-five dollars today. Thirty-five dollars next week. God bless you.